and welcome to another adventure in Australian literature. So this week sees Anzac Day, which is a very significant uh, day in the Australian calendar, the 25th of April. And so this week we are having a look not at fiction, but at some interesting non-fiction books that relate to Anzac Day. Before we start, I would invite you to check out the Black Cocky Press shop and Redbubble shop. Uh, either side of me you can see things that we sell. We sell books, we sell t-shirts, we sell book merch, we sell writing services, loads and loads of different things to help with your writing or to just entertain you. Now, on to our book. Now, our books today, I have quite a pile of them. These are actually all books that I used when I was writing my novel, Poisoning the Nest. Which I'll put up one of these sides. And so these are actually historical works by major historians that I used when I was looking at both the home front in Australia and also the experiences of soldiers, especially as they returned home. Because I, one thing that I was adamant about was that I was not going to spend a great deal of time um, in, at the front. I just didn't feel that that was a story either I wished to tell or really had any was in any position to tell. It wasn't what I was interested in. What I was interested in was the home front. And yet, I still needed to look at some of these things in order to understand what the characters were going through and what the characters were experiencing. There is very little of um, of the front in my book, but there is a lot of actually sort of behind the lines things, especially things like um, hospital. So let's get started with these books. Now, oh, before we get started with the books, actually, let me explain what Anzac Day is. Anzac Day, the 25th of April, commemorates the, uh, the, the, the storming of Gallipoli, 25th of April in 1915. So it's essentially, it's, it's the first time Australian troops went into battle in Australia, for, in the First World War as Australians. Um, Australia had sent uh, some soldiers to the Boer War, but Australia wasn't Australia. Australia was a set of colonies, but the First World War is the first time that the newly federated colonies that make up Australia and became states went to war. So that is why it is significant. It is uh, some a, a, a date that is like Remembrance Day for the Americans or Veterans Day, I think, or like Remembrance Day. Australians do commemorate Remembrance Day, but not to the extent that they commemorate Anzac Day. Anzac Day is our national commemorative day or Memorial Day. It's a very hard sort of choice to make, a word choice to make there. Memorial Day to um, Australian service people. So it's a very serious day in this country. But now, now that we have that over and done, explained, here are the books. So obviously one of the first books I had a look at was Anzac to Amens by C.E.W. Bean. Now this is C.E.W. Bean was the official war historian. He was also an official war correspondent. He saw a lot of stuff. However, this is a book that needs to be taken with a degree of care because 
C.W. Bean was instrumental in the creation of the Anzac legend and this book was instrumental in that creation. This is not a book that you can read as a purely unbiased first or primary source. This is a highly constructed book. It is telling a very particular narrative and you must read it with a, that in mind and a discerning eye to what he is saying. He is constructing a particular notion. This is a notion of the Anzac that was designed to be comforting to those who had lost people. It was designed to make people feel better about the fact that their sons, their brothers, their fathers had been lost in the war, had been injured in the war, had been shattered in the war, had lost friends in the war. It was written with a very particular view in mind. So it has to be read in that way. Nevertheless, it I found it very useful for finding out, okay, well, if I want my character to serve in the um in the in the Gallipoli landing where what regiment would he be in where would he go next things like that it was very useful for things like that but for in terms of 100% accuracy of what was happening no this is still propaganda and has to be read in that way. Not all propaganda is malicious. Casablanca is pop propaganda. Okay? Not all, it, just because it's propaganda doesn't mean it's malicious, but it does mean that it is not a 100% reliable source in terms of its objectivity. So that's our first book. Second book, and you're going to find that the books that I looked at are quite different after that one. The book that I really wanted to use, but or would have liked to have found, but could not get a copy of because I don't think it's in print anymore, and it certainly wasn't in print when I was looking that, was Bill Gamage's book. And if you look at Bill Gamage's book, and then you look at the Australian film Gallipoli, the Australian film Gallipoli absolutely derives a lot of its tone, a lot of its character from Bill Gamage's book. The um, next book I had a look at was called Gallipoli, The End of the Myth by Robin Pryor. Now, this book is all about Gallipoli, but it's not about the mythology of Gallipoli. It is about Gallipoli. Robin Pryor is an Australian military historian okay he is somebody who is working with and I believe in I believe when I say Australian military historian um, yes he was a visit he is a visiting professional professorial fellow of the University of Adelaide but the, and this is the really big thing, and visiting fellow University of New South Wales Australian Defence Force Academy. Okay, so when I say he's a military historian, he is a historian attached to the the, the military. The um, so this one far more than Bean was what I relied on because. This one is not interested in creating a comforting myth. This is actually interested in what actually happened. So this one, if you want a good book on Gallipoli, this is one I would certainly say have a look at. It's very interesting. It puts Australia into its context. It puts Gallipoli into a much greater context. It um, shows that the Australian commitment at Gallipoli was a small part of a much, much larger force. If we think that our losses at Gallipoli were the hugest losses, actually no. There were French at Gallipoli, there were English at Gallipoli, there were Indian troops at Gallipoli. 
So this one is a really fascinating book in terms of seeing a real vision of battles of nearly of over a hundred years ago. So have a look at that. Now, because I was also looking at Europe and I was also looking at the home front. This was a brilliant book. This is Joan Beaumont. It's called Broken Nation, Australians in the Great War. Now, this one doesn't just look at the military contribution of Australia to the First World War. This one looks at the overall overall um, picture of what was happening in the First World War in Australia as well. So this is the book that will tell you about the anti-German sentiment. This is a book that will tell you about the conscription debates. This is a book that puts everything into its context all around Australia as a whole. So if you want to look at what was happening in Australia, not just the military commitment, but what was happening socially, what was happening among women, among all sorts of groups in Australia, this is the book to have a look at. Next, also on the home front side of things, is the conscription conflict and the Great War. This is edited by Robin Archer, Joe DeMossi, Marie Groot and Sean Skalma. And this is about the two, two referendums that we had in Australia during the First World War about conscription. Because one of the striking things about Australia is for the First World War, the army was entirely volunteer. In fact, the Australian Constitution does not allow, did not allow, I'm not sure if it's been changed. I don't think actually the Constitution has been changed. It is, um, it, it's, it's fairly specific. It does not allow for conscription of soldiers to be deployed overseas. As such, that's what the conscription debate was wanting, was are we allowed to conscript people in this country and force them to fight overseas. I think even the Vietnam War that had conscription did not, could not force men to fight in Vietnam. It could conscript them into the army, but I think, I think, and I will double check this, I think they had to volunteer to go to Vietnam. There were a lot of incentives induce, to induce them to accept that offer, but they were, they, they were not, conscripted to straight to Vietnam, like in, say, America. I think the same goes with the F Second World War, because they did introduce conscription in the Second World War. But again, I think it was conscripted into the army, but overseas service was, though expected, not something you could be conscripted into. So, this was the great conscription debate. The Australian forces were an entirely volunteer service. A lot of actual service men did not want conscription because they had seen conscription in the British Army and they did not like what that did in the British Army. Um, and this was a very, very vicious debate in this country. It opened sectarian rifts in the country. It opened class rifts in the country. And part of the reason why this debate, one group that, that this debate is focuses on that is not focused on in any other country is women. Because women in Australia had the vote. And women, the women's vote was hotly hotly contested in both conscription debates, both for and against. So this is a really fascinating book. The sectarian divisions that the conscription debate opened up stayed open until about the 1960s. So it, um, it's a really fascinating book.
Uh, so there's that one. And finally, no, not finally. Our, our next book is called Shattered Anzacs, and that is by Mariana Larson, and it's called Living Shattered Anzacs, Living with the Scars of War. This book is one of the biggest books that I used. I was a little disappointed in the way that this book was written, but it was the limitations of the um, the research. This is a book that really it it's it's a very new it's a fairly new book. I mean, two thousand and eight. So it is fairly fairly new. It's a 21st century book, and it's really taken until then before anyone actually started asking these questions. So you can understand for men who were living a hundred years ago, who were injured a hundred over a hundred years ago, finding anyone who could possibly remember what their lives were like. These are young children's recollections of their fathers, who are now elderly people. So they're. It, it's it, it she she really managed to grab these stories right before they were potentially lost but it is fascinating to look at how Australia coped with large numbers of young men who returned permanently or um, with, with with permanent disabilities, either physical or mental disabilities caused by their war experiences. Um, it's, it's, it's really fascinating to know that there were nearly twice as many men returned injured than died. So while we make a lot, justly so, of people who died in the war, these are men who were quite silenced. They came back, that was their story. And that was a story that I really wanted to look at with my novel, was what was it like after you come back in the great silence? The thing that nobody wants to talk about. Oh, you came back, that's your story. These men started dying in the 20s and the 30s. That's the other thing. So you have this great wave of grief over the initial deaths, and then through the 20s and the 30s, you have men who are then dying, young men, as a result of injuries that are happening, and that's what this book looks at. It, um, it's a fascinating read. It's an absolutely fascinating read. But it was, a, it was a story that was very much silenced for a very long time. So. I recommend that if you can find that and finally this is the most controversial book that I had a look at um, this is called what's wrong with Anzac the militarization of Australian history by Marilyn Lake Henry Leonard L Henry Reynolds Mark McKenna and Joy DeMossi okay this is a book that is examining the legend the Anzac legend itself, which brings us all the way back around to our first book. This book is examining what Bean and the population at the time created and why they created that and why we hold on to that and why we are incredibly resistant as a nation to examine what we created, how we were coping. Now, this book gets very easily misrepresented. This is not a book about disrespecting anybody. It is certainly not, they are certainly not interested in disrespecting the experiences and the sacrifice of servicemen and women over the course of the century who fall under the term Anzac. It's not at all interested in that. What it is interested in is the public perception of Anzac, the public perception of the legend, how that harms us as an identity, how, how, that, how that harms us as a nation in terms of our identity, how that harms current res, return service men and women, and how it is used politically 
So it is an absolutely fascinating book. Again, this one is not that old. It's a 21st century book. Might be a little hard to get a hold of, but if you are interested in looking at something that is critical, not disrespectful, but critical, then this is a book I would highly recommend. Uh, Marilyn Lake has talked about whenever she discusses this in, especially in the media, because she's a significant academic talking about this area, she, is, she has, been in, has been invited to write on this in newspapers. And she has talked about the fact that the backlash is horrific absolutely horrific which is precisely why a book like this is necessary because if you can't criticize something it starts to become a problem so those are the books that i would recommend you have a look at if you are interested in uh, any further examination of this National Commemorative Memorial Day in Australia. If you are Australian, definitely have a look. If you're not Australian, but you are interested in Australia's involvement in the First World War, this is a good place to start. And I will see you again later with another adventure in Australian literature. Bye. If you would like to support this channel, come across to the Black Hockey Press website www.blackhockeypress.com.au where you will find books and other writing services to help with your writing.